Right now, yes. So we're just uh, waiting on uh, the attendees uh, to join. And uh, once everyone's on board, then we'll be able to uh, start. Thank you all for joining us. Okay, I think uh, now's a good point to start. Um, welcome everyone, thank you for uh, giving us your time. This is the third edition of the Fundoc webinar series where we look at the world of hospitality and the turbulence that 2020 has launched upon, uh, upon all of us and how, uh, how we're uh, moving ahead with that, uh, especially from a, particularly from a tech perspective. We have a fantastic uh, panel for, uh, for you guys today. Um, we wanted to make sure that we cover um, all different uh, aspects of the hospitality sector. So uh, we've got with us uh, Adam Daba, who is uh, an angel investor uh, with uh, multiple investments across the Dubai and Egypt and a particular focus on uh, F&B um, with names such as uh, Switch in the UAE and uh, Cafe Arabesca, as well as Gabi's in Egypt, you might be familiar with. Uh, with us as well is uh, uh, Khaled Ghalib, uh, who has uh, many decades of experience in uh, the top tip of the spear in the hospitality segment uh, between Egypt, France, and, uh, and the UAE, having been the COO of uh, Miros Lifestyle and Hostility for a portion of time, and now as a consultant working with uh, the biggest names in the region, uh, advising them on how, uh, how to better their offerings. Along with uh, Oriel Plana, the CEO and founder of uh, High Guests, uh, one of the fastest growing uh, short-term rental holiday home uh, tech-enabled operators uh, present in, uh, in, in three countries, uh, in four cities. Um, he's currently with us in Dubai, but uh, they've got operations in uh, Barcelona and uh, in uh, Goa and in Delhi. So um, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's start off with the questions. I wanted to get everyone's, uh, this is a bit of a dive into the crystal ball as we like to, like to start with on our, on our webinars, but uh, ask each, uh, each panelist about um, a bit of tech, uh, an idea, a, a product, uh, something that uh, they've been introduced to this year in their particular industry and they believe will become a part of the norms of the industry. So for example, for Adam, um, is there something that uh, 2020 and its turbulence has brought into your field uh, that you think is going to be uh, something that sticks with us uh, in the future? Honestly, I wouldn't say there's something new that came in 2020, but there's a lot of the online aggregators that have been developing and growing by two, 300% uh, month to month and uh, since COVID-19, we're talking about uh, aggregators like Deliveroo, Talabat, in this region that we are aware of. Um, and then of course, like Grubhub internationally and so on. So these aggregators have seen a substantial growth that were never expected. Yes, they've been growing slowly, but uh, these are the ones, the aggregators or online platforms that I believe um, we will see more of post COVID-19, but also we're going to look at other apps that are going to be more related to uh, menus, so digital menus and so on, like an Egyptian menu, uh, if you've heard about it. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, but it's interesting because we've also heard of a lot of, uh, you know, uh, consolidation and, and, and uh, stepping out like uh, Uber Eats uh, as an aggregator has stepped out of that field. Do you think that uh, this in its current form will continue being the way these aggregators exist or do you think that their particular industry is is uh, is ripe for change as well due to uh, the massive growth and the massive opportunity that they've been uh, faced with but the direction the direction in general pre covid before covid is that they want to build like the, the racing, the Deliveroo's, the Grid Hubs, the, uh, the Grub Hubs and so on, they're racing to build a full aggregator that unifies every single service that you will need in the fingertips of your customers. So I don't need 100 apps or 10 apps or 5 apps. 
I want to create an aggregator which is going to consolidate all services, whether it's delivery, whether it's rentals, whether it's services like fixing my phone, laundry, cleaning services, everything, uh, uh, transportation, all of that is going through a platform. So what happens is COVID-19 made that a much bigger and better and more powerful positioning than it used to be pre-COVID-19. Yeah. So uh, I'll throw the question to you, uh, Khaled. Um, in the, the world of hotels, uh, and uh, is, is there something that this year has brought on that uh, you hadn't uh, realized uh, was uh, valuable or uh, is, uh, is it been uh, more of the same? Everyone is on mute. I think there is a, a complete yeah. mute. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. There you okay. go. No, I, I was just saying, it, it, you know, I've never seen in my life such a big number of QR codes thrown all over the place as you walk anywhere. Um, but uh, first, I would just like to thank you, Mohammed, for, for hosting this webinar and, and being along my, my fellow panelists here. Uh, it's great, and, and recently as well, I've been, uh, you know, privileged to be part of the advisory board for uh, for Fondo, which is great. I'm looking forward to great successes with you guys. Um, and uh, you know, if if we look at it in terms of, I agree with definitely with what 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 Adam was was hinting at. Um, in terms of the tech lab and the innovations uh, labs, I've, I've always been there. Um, you know, it's been going on for years that uh, all the big giant, big players in the industry uh, and the complementing providers as well, uh, you know, we're, we're looking into innovations in tech. Um, but I think the recent period has definitely accelerated uh, the need, the requirement for to deploy some of these innovations that would come into play and looking at it for future tense in terms of, of uh, at the moment and post COVID as well. Uh, however, I, I will put it as, as the, the tourism, uh, uh, travel and hospitality industry definitely, as we know, is, is been badly hit. Uh, you know, it's one of the worst uh, uh, industries that has been impacted by, by, uh, uh, by the virus, uh, uh, you know, pandemic. And uh, obviously cash flows and, and under, are under a lot of pressure, uh, you know, for, uh, in terms of operating expenses and, and capital expenditures as well. So you see now uh, a lot of the tech uh, uh, related uh, innovations are number one areas that is hitting is definitely the health and safety. Uh, and this is the paramount and, and, and you know, all, all brands and all operators want to create this resilience and giving this assurance to people. So I think this is number one. And having a, a, an industry, as I said, which is badly hit. So obviously as we go along, investment in tech has to be uh, has to be scalable and, and definitely has to be ROI based. Uh, uh, but definitely uh, developers and operators will think, if I don't invest in tech, will I be part of the, of the coming future or not? Uh, this is again another question to ask. Uh, so as I said, it's always been there. Uh, great innovations, great initiatives. Uh, but I think this period has accelerated uh, uh, you know, the, the, the appearance of, of more or less uh, uh, concepts that, that we see nowadays. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, but Oriel, uh, for you uh, working in, uh, in the field of short-term rentals and, uh, and, and the holiday home hospitality, traditionally, of course, historically, people rented their places. And then uh, came these uh, aggregators uh, such as uh, Airbnb uh, and Booking, etc., and they techified and, and, and made that area ripe for uh, modernization. So now you guys are the, the, the cowboys, the, the, the leaders of uh, um, innovation in the hospitality spectrum. What does, what does this year mean to you? What does tech in this year mean to you? Yeah, so on one hand, I mean, I agree with uh, Khaled that, that the word, in my opinion, uh, of this pandemic when it comes to technology is acceleration. No? So nothing new has come, but a lot of things had to be accelerated. No? On one hand, and he made a, a really valid point, no? so operators 
are in this in this uh, decision because capital is scarce and cash flows are are in, I mean it's it's uh, we have been hugely impacted in cash flow so sometimes technology adoption requires a bit of capex that we cannot afford but at the same time impact in the opex which is what we need to do to transform and become stronger when everything it's it's come back to normal which i i hope it's soon so 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 we are in in this in this dif difficult decision no where, where how much to invest in in transformation and how much not to invest no? but but uh answering to your question no the thing is that we were a little bit like we had the technology in our in our core no it's not that the covid made us just go to trans to technology or use technology so for us it's it's like business as usual no? so so and that put us in a good position because then we are i mean more ready to uh, adopt the technologies that i think now need to be adopted no that are my opinion now we 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 smart home was something that we were already implementing but for me now the future is is more the use of video in my opinion no so hmm. face recognition id now you so you see now you go everywhere in dubai and you have your camera i mean it's for the temperature but but yeah. maybe in the next month they are going to track you and and see if you are covid free or not covid free or in some like video concerts so a little bit everything to to allow the the online uh, execution of the operation which is the ma main challenge for hospitality no in my opinion yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Now, uh, back to Adam, um, for some reason, tech has always been associated with, uh, uh, especially in F&B, with a fast food, uh, faster, more casual dining uh, offering. Do you think that tech has a role to play across the board in uh, the entire value chain of the, uh, in the dining or in the F&B uh, spectrum from, from uh, techifying the making of a burger in a McDonald's restaurant all the way to like a three Michelin star uh, dining experience. Do you think technology will have a space across all those or will it remain constrained in the, in the more, uh, let's say, um, humble uh, portion of the offering? We are living in a world that is technology driven and we cannot deny that, right? We're all, we all, every day we see all these new technologies coming in, whether we have robotic arms that are expediting and accelerating the food in the kitchens from, you know, to reduce your overheads and your, your OPEX to the front end where the consumer has the mobile apps to order, see the menu and all that stuff. And we've seen the transition for online delivery from phone calls to websites to eventually a full app. And now you have the aggregators, which I keep bringing up because the aggregators are the strongest in this industry of the F&B. What I believe in when we're talking about restaurants, fast food restaurants, yes, technology uh, is going to have a big play in the technological robotic arms in the kitchens because we've seen now more and more uh, startups and uh, that are developed and very very advanced we also see some restaurants that are fully technologized technologized from kitchen all the way to serving right you go in you just plug in it's like a vending machine restaurant so yes i see this but do i believe it's going to be the future I, I don't believe it's going to be an impactful because we've seen the results of these restaurants there's a human interaction when it comes to in-house restaurants, right? If we're talking about delivery, it's one thing. If we're talking about in-house experience, it's a completely different thing. When I talk about in-house, I'm not talking just about, you know, fine dining. I'm talking about the casual cafes, restaurants, and so on. We as humans are, are creatures of habit, right? We believe that, you know, sitting with people, communicating, interacting, playing cards, uh, smoking, uh, drinking, what all these different things it's part of your human experience in-house experience that you cannot be you will never have the same experience through technology so just to talk about techify techification it could be as simple as websites social platforms white labeled apps delivery aggregators robotic digital menu digital payments digital loyalty and much more all of this are different types of technology that we can use in the F&B world, all right? So 
at the end of the day, it's all about the revenue growth. This is a business. So we're talking about number of customers, orders plus customers, the take rate, the delivery, and the gross merchandise value, and what you have to So what I'd like to kind of focus on is, is, is very interesting regarding the fine line. We know that all the normal fast food restaurants and uh, casual has already taken and, 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 and jumped onto the online world of online delivery to grow you know, for growth and, and fast revenue generating streams. That is a, a noted no-brainer. But then we're looking at the fine dining because I think um, fine dining is, is one of the most important elements of whether they are going to succeed on becoming technical technified or they're going to just stay as analog as you were mentioning before and stay as this. Yeah. Right. It, it is important because what is the differentiator between fine dining and any other restaurant? It's a unique experience. We are talking about that full journey, you know, from walking in, from the host uh, welcoming you to seating you to giving you even the menu looks, you know, it's part of the experience. It's, 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 it's very detailed. By the time you leave there, not just the taste, but the full experience is what you remember. And that's what makes you a fine dining restaurant. Now, for a fine dining restaurant, it's not easy for you to just jump online and become an online uh, technology and, and, and the technology and delivery online because you're not set up for that. Your yeah. kitchen is not set up for that. Your logistics is not set up. Your operation team is not set up for that. And your price points is definitely not set up for that. So what is an online aggregator as well? It's a world of 1,000 plus restaurants at the fingertips of the customers. So like I said, it's food, the fast food and casual restaurants for face. But it's not it's never been yet fine dining. Yeah. Because fine dinings are, you know, they are, have that exclusive yeah. exclusivity behind it. And once as a fine diner, I jump online and I aggregated with McDonald's and five guys, I lose that luxurious reputation. Yeah. I no longer fine diner. That's all. Two for me to compete there. It's very difficult. Why? Because my price points are not. So I cannot offer the same dish that I'm offering in-house for 50 or 70 percent less because the price points online, no matter what, is never going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. So these things to put in. So normal customer behavior as well is yeah. expecting that the delivery online is going to take me 30 minutes maximum. Anything beyond that creates this negative emotion or opinion on that brand. And that's yeah. very dangerous for any fine dining. And especially fine dining in general takes around 30 minutes on average to serve in restaurants. Just to prepare. So, yes. So imagine going online. How is that going to work? How is that going to fix? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. right? So online aggregators are not known to be used for early order with early ordering. So what I mean by that is that Customers don't say, okay, I want to eat at 3 p.m. Let me order four hours in advance. No, I'm hungry now. I want to order now. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, that, that's the customer behavior that is a norm and it will not change. It's going to be very, very difficult to change. So, so I, I, I send the same question now to, to Khaled because you brought up a very good point. What is fine dining? So for hotels, it's maybe a bit easier to differentiate because you have a star system. But I think the same sort of uh, rationale applies in the sense that uh, the higher the number of stars, the more exclusive the experience, the more human interface there is required. We always know that uh, there is a, there is a, a, a butler per every suite. There's a wh whatever. This is the, this is what's normally sold as a luxury experience. What in tech do you think can uh, overcome this barrier or or become part of the business model for? A more luxury hotel offering moving on to the future. Uh, look, if if we take I think he's on mute again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. Look, in in general, the 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 whole industry, regardless of the rating, is based on on human interaction. Uh, and, and up to certain levels, depending on the grading, on the, uh, on the class, on the, on the rating, on the category, and so on. Uh, 
on, on luxury, you're right, it is on, on steroids, right? So it's more, more, more than any other uh, uh, asset class or hotel class. And the service and the interaction is the whole mark of, of the whole experience. Uh, luxury is about being 10 steps ahead, is anticipation of needs, uh, both in, in hardware and in software, which is the, the service delivery. Um, safety is, is, is now becoming the new luxury. So your, your new ambassadors are going to talk about, you know, how clean you are, how safe the environment is, how sustainable the, 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 the product or the hotel is. Um, and, and also being pressured with uh, nowadays what we see a leaner operating model in, in hotels, which I think is going to stay for quite a while. Uh, definitely tech has to play a role. Um, and I think uh, tech will complement the experience rather than, uh, you know, uh, 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 take part of, of the interaction. Now, as we said, it's a need. It's a, it's a necessity. People are accepting tech interactions and, and a tech uh, interactive environment more and more. Uh, so people will accept it and they will interact with the services and utilize the tech to, you know, get the same rich experience. Uh, so tech will, will certainly play an, an added value. In, in my opinion, what I'm seeing now, uh, you know, areas that, that, that's going to enhance this experience. One is definitely uh, a customer empowered and well oriented solutions to be provided, um, you know, whether it's an app, whether it's a, it's a platform. So the interaction starts from as much as possible, a touchless uh, uh, or a less interactive uh, uh, journey from the start to, to finish. And, and we see that, you know, the clientele is, is accepting that. I mean, nowadays, uh, some of us, when we go to, to, to restaurants and, and dine, you know, we don't look at it the same way as we used to. Uh, you know, how interactive and how many times the, the personnel came and talked to you and, and asked you and, and you know, interfered, uh, I'm not saying in a bad way, nicely in your experience, which is part of your overall experience. So all your senses are there. Uh, so now we, we, do, we do accept it a, a little bit. And so a customer empowered and enabled solutions where people can interact with the services from booking restaurants, booking spas, talking to the concierge, talking to the front desk and, and asking for whatever, a late checkout or a copy of the bill and so on. Um, the second thing I see is, is potentially uh, impacting the, the in-room space more than the public space uh, or the common spaces. The public spaces had the attention over the last few years, uh, you know, from, from communal, communal living to interactive spaces and and, you know, uh, uh, the, the investments were put more towards, towards the public areas or common areas. But nowadays, it's more going or it's going to lean more towards the in-room experience. Again, could be app-related. You're sitting in your room and you can order whatever you want, uh, you know, and interact with all the services, all the facilities of the hotel. Um, I see it coming more into voice, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, applications in the room. Uh, you know, from opening curtains, switching off the lights, show me the menu. Uh, uh, so this, I see it coming post-COVID uh, more and more. Um, the other thing is, is, is empowering the guests as well to utilize the, uh, uh, their mobile phones, uh, you know, to integrate, uh, like we were talking about integrations and aggregations, you know, to integrate more with the services as well. People don't want to touch more and more services in, 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 in whatever uh, experience they're having or, or in the room or in the public areas. They just want to utilize their own machine. That's what they're used to. They're happy to, uh, you know, interact uh, through it. Uh, uh, for them, it's considered safe. It's considered yours. Um, so I think mobile payments is, is going to be something as well that's going to that's gonna come more and more. So you can basically... Uh, 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 you know, plot the scenario of your journey and experience from A to Z through, through your mobile phone. Uh, from I, one, one area could be the ID check-in. So blockchains might, you know, secure something there that, that you know, having a, 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 an official ID identified, it could be uh, moving forward. Uh, um, it, it's already active in certain parts of the world. And over and above, I see the AI playing part and understanding, uh, uh, you know, the behavior, the, how the consumership moves and how it evolves. And we're going to keep learning and, and you know, uh, adjusting as we go along.
So, so basically you're saying no robot butlers. It could be, <laughs> it could be, it could be. If, if he serves the purpose, but, but I think, I think uh, it's yeah, a but, bit of a tough one in the luxury well, environment. But what, what, what I'm getting at is uh, you're saying that the technology will, will seamlessly blend into the experience and not be uh, a, a clear add-on to the experience, but continuing the same customer journey, just enabling the tech uh, empowerment of it across. For the luxury, for the yeah. luxury segment, that's, that's how I, that's how I yeah. see it, in my opinion. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, uh, for, for you, uh, Oriel, um, uh, we know that one of the, one of the main uh, differentiators in the short-term rental uh, properties or short-term rental uh, stays, uh, holiday homes, etc., has been uh, trying to provide a, 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 a luxury experience or to a degree a luxury experience without all the overhead of a hotel and so being able to provide it at uh, a, a discount from the hotel experience. But what we're seeing now with a lot of those hotels, especially the non-luxury hotels that we're talking about, is that they're outsourcing everything. Uh, they're outsourcing their kitchens, they're cloud sourcing the food, F&B, the uh, no more uh, huge conference rooms, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and, and it goes on. The, do you feel that this is encroaching into your, uh, into your offering as a, as a short-term rental uh, property manager? And if that is the case, is there something that uh, tech is helping you do to be able to then re, uh, redefine your USP to the, to the guests? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, that I think this, this crisis has uh, made us learn as well is that, um, first of all, there is a lot of uncertainty. You know? So we know what the customer wants today. And, uh, and I agree that the customer today accepts most of, I mean, mainly everything because first it's health and safety. And, and if you explain what you have to do, I mean, they, they, they accept almost everything. The question here is, is that, they will, they will, I mean, they will like the experience and they will continue to want this experience in the future or they will want to go back to the previous scenario where there is much more human interaction and all this, no? So this is a question that honestly, I mean, I, I have no idea and, and, and I don't know. I made so many forecasts in the last four months that I have failed and I don't want to do any other forecast. So, so I don't know. So for me, the key now is to be flexible, no? And, and be flexible enough to adapt to these changes. And that's yeah. what technology, I think, uh, uh, helps, no? To, to, but also the, the organization, the processes, the team, how you communicate your team and everything. We need to be ready to adapt to any change that will happen, not only after the crisis, but during the crisis that probably will last at least, I don't know, three, six months, nine months. Okay. So that's the first thing, no? And then that also gives us a lot of, I mean, in my opinion, a bit of advantage towards these hotels, no? Because they are... They, they, for their, I mean, as per definition, they are less flexible, less adaptable. Okay, now they are doing everything you explained, but what happens if after three months, six months, uh, the customer wants what, what he wanted six months ago? Are they going to change the whole business model? No? Whereas yeah. our, our value proposition by design is this flexibility, this adaptability. We convert any apartment into a hotel. No? So we can now have one apartment in one tower here, a building as a hotel apartment, a villa in the palm or, or in, in, a, in a different urban environment. So by design, our organization is, is flexible and with the technology in its, in its core. No? So, so it's true that, that they, are, they are competing with us, especially in the price point. No? Even hotels now in Dubai are, are cheaper than, than holiday homes. No? You can almost stay for free because you pay 100 dirhams and you get a voucher of 100 dirhams F&B. No? Yeah, yeah. But we have 85% of occupancy. So, so the customer still wants to be in a holiday home for the safety because the common areas uh, don't, don't exist in a holiday homes. They can clean the apartment. Uh, they don't need, they, they cook. I mean, they know what they cook, not, not someone else. No? So, so there is a differentiator that, that is still there and, and I think it's going to be there forever. No? And, and another, and, and I mean, also based on your question no, about, about um, pricing or cost, no? Holiday homes is not only about pricing and cost. No, it's also about the experience and the yeah. the, the availability. No, in, in Dubai you have hotels almost everywhere. No, but on, in other cities, hotels. I mean, you cannot have an apartment in front of the of the landmark of the city. No, maybe you don't have hotels in the in like with direct view uh, 
of the Burj Khalifa of each city, no? Here in Dubai, yes, but in other cities, no, no? Sometimes it's also the uniqueness of this experience, no? Or the, yeah. the special design, the experience. So I think this will, will, will continue being an advantage in our, in our side, no? And, and uh, so I don't think there is an, a specific technology that will give us the continuous advantage. It's, it's more that I agree with, with, with uh, Khaled that the technology is not going to be something, it's not like the robot. I don't see a robot. No, it's not going to be a technology that will be the center of the, of the new experience. It, yeah. will, it will be like more seamless and helping the and, and helping us adapt so what the customer will want in six months honestly i have no idea so we need to be ready maybe he yeah. wants 10 10 people in check-in because he misses the 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 the, the former the normal no? yeah yeah we don't know so i think it's a bit uh, i think also technology but uh, technology comes with an organization with processes and i think we need to work there as well yeah uh, just a quick uh, note on housekeeping before we uh, move ahead. Uh, uh, we're open for Q&A, so we're going to do a round of questions now, and then, uh, and then uh, anytime you want to send your questions in, uh, in the, the chat, uh, please do, and we'll, we'll pose them to uh, the panelists once we're done. Also, uh, for anyone who's missed this webinar, it will be posted on our uh, YouTube uh, page. Uh, uh, details will be available uh, subsequently, but uh, yeah. Um, just so we move on with the last round of questions, and back to you, Adam. Um, uh, this uh, um, adopt adoption and uh, uh, adoption of tech um, is that something? Um, do you think that will be driven by customer behavior, like Khaled alluded to? Now uh, there's a prediction that uh, the new normal is uh, where the premium is placed on like hygiene, and customers are going to demand certain tech technological adoptions for that behavior. Or do you think that the main uh, driver for this adoption is economic, uh, the 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 biting the, the the wallet, you know, the pain, the pinching the wallet that uh, everybody working in hospitality is feeling, will be the driver of that? And do you think it makes a difference? There's a survey that was done by MIT last month post uh, COVID regarding you know the online use of customers, and I know this is a U.S.-based survey, but it still reflects almost. Uh, throughout, and the survey showed that 42% of respondents would use online more, uh, and while only 8% would reduce, reduce their uses after the crisis, uh, so that means you already have a, a, a huge market that are jumping online, and post-COVID that they're expecting that 8% of them are going to stop using online, because what they're saying is that once you get online and you lose that habit of ordering and using online technology, digital payments, and so on, it's very rare that you're going to go back. With that survey, you would say, you would say I'll just say this is uh, customer behavior. But what I would like to highlight, in my humble opinion, is that we are creatures of habit, as I mentioned before. And uh, so with that being said, the next year, post-COVID-19, yes, this is going to be a customer behavior decision. But after that year, it's going to be purely economic behavior because people are going to go back to the norm that the Khaled mentioned, but the normal behavior will most probably going to come back to the whole experience. However, as, a, as, a, as West Chalmateer, I'm going to see a revenue stream that I haven't seen before, and I will not want to stop that. So I'm going to continue the economic decision behind that of using technology just but one year after. The first year, customer behavior, second year, definitely economic behavior. Now, speaking of uh, economies and, uh, and the changes that this year has uh, brought upon us, if there is one consensus uh, amongst everyone working in the, the travel industry is that the, the, the ripest portion of travel that's going to change and be affected you know, for, for a sizable portion moving on in the future is business travel. Um, now, for you, Khaled, um, what do you think hotels can do to compensate for this? Is there any technologies that you are aware of where they can still continue playing a relevant part in uh, facilitating bringing together of businesses uh, moving on to the future, knowing that companies have now realized that, of course, not all business travel will ever be eliminated, but a sizable portion of it uh, can be done remotely and in an effective manner. Is there anything in particular that you can think of? 
look, I think a, a perfect example is how we're seeing each other now. <laughs> you know, uh, having having virtual meetings, and it's proven that it it, it did deliver uh, throughout the the last few months. Uh, you, you're absolutely right. Business travel has been impacted the most, uh, 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 but uh, the most impacted is what we call the MICE segment, which is meeting incentives, conferences, and events, where it involves large ga gatherings of, of people in one place. Uh, this definitely has been impacted the most and still no indications when it's going to come back to some sort of, of normality. Uh, uh, the, the hotel visits and hotel stays at the moment are uh, hovering around staycations, are hovering around leisure, uh, uh, leisure stays uh, more than, than anything else. And it started off we, within borders, so it's, it's staycations as we call it, uh, road trips, uh, 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 you know, uh, nature, nature stays in, in resorts and in lodges and, and what have you more than anything else because it promotes that safe, uh, uh, hygienic, uh, nature, sustainable environment. And this is what people definitely miss. Uh, now for, for business travel, travel and, and, and meetings, uh, a perfect example, uh, uh, over the last couple of days, we've seen in the news that Dubai is slowly coming back and announcing events are being back on, on the calendar again, which is great. Uh, but definitely uh, uh, governed by certain rules and, and regulations in terms of the capacities, how many people can attend, uh, how the whole logistics of the whole event is going to be carried out, uh, which is which is great, which is positive. So I think it gives some sort of uh, you know reassurance that things will will go back. And Dubai obviously was one of the f first few destinations that opened to tourists again. Now. Yeah. Uh, uh, how I see in terms of, of moving forward for a short while, or it could be for a medium to quite a bit, because now the indications are going uh, uh, towards 2021, 2020, 2022, that we see a return uh, uh, to uh, uh, previous levels of, of trading or, or, or business. Uh, now, uh, We've seen a recent events that had been also a hybrid of both. Uh, so you have uh, a, a common space where you have a gathering of a group of people up to a certain number, and then you have an interaction with tech, utilizing tech in terms of interacting with other participants who could not travel, uh, you know, who, who are following strict rules of, of uh, 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 social distancing and, and isolation and so on. So uh, I've seen that with a few uh, training companies and, and, and uh, local meeting events and, and so on. So that could be one way, the hybrid, hybrid concept. Like uh, sort of satellite conferences and they all join together somehow. Correct. Uh, and, and you could have an international speaking, a speaker talking to you over, over a screen. Hmm. Uh, so this is, this is one type that should come back. Uh, again, it's, it's the, uh, uh, the precautions that are taking place in, in the meeting space, again, from a QR codes to uh, uh, interacting with the hotel personnel and staff to ask for, you know, someone please come and fix my screen or, or the laptop is not working and so on. All the requests that we've been used to in hotels and in, in the meeting space. The, uh, uh, the br coffee breaks and the lunches are being served in a, in a certain way where it, it, it promotes social distancing and, and you know, having the, the precautions in place, which is, which is also, also great. Uh, taking it steps back from the initial start, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, hotel companies and, and organizers and, and venues uh, that follow, uh, you know, some sort of a, a 3D a virtual inspection of the meeting space. So uh, I've seen one uh, international company that has implemented that. And uh, you want to also give the assurance of the contractual terms, you know, because... Yeah meeting and conference uh, 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 businesses is not cheap for companies or for organizers. So, so obviously it has to have some flexibility in terms of any cancellations, uh, amendments in, in the number of attendees and, and so on. Uh, so I think we will see this for, for a while once meetings come back to some sort of, of normality. Uh, 
but as I said, the expectations, it's going to be 2021, 2022. This is what we're seeing now. All said and done, we might see it beforehand, which, which would be great, amazing. But it's impacted not only by the venue providers, it's in, impacted by people being able to cross borders and going from yeah. one destination to another. And this is also will have a, 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 big, a big role to play. Yeah. No, yeah, very interesting. Um, uh, we'll close off the, the main uh, uh, questions with you, Oriel. Um, when you look at the value chain that, you, uh, that your uh, uh, segment of the industry operates in, is there a particular point in the value chain that you see now being prime for uh, tech enablement and tech adoption uh, that, that is maybe lagging behind the rest? We know that uh, reservations, uh, all of that has been fully tech enabled over the last uh, decade to half a decade. Uh, is there anything, any missing point now that you feel like is prime for some innovation? Yeah, the main, I mean, depends on the market because different markets have different uh, levels of adoption of technology. But, uh, for example, in Dubai, compared to Europe, for example, where we operate, the, the, where, we, where we see less is the connection with providers. No? So, for example, with the outsourced company, so this exchange of information, the, um, the connection with uh, like the integration of systems. This, this is the, the and, and especially the, the, um, the, the, how to say it, like, um, equalizing the level of technology. No? Uh, so yeah. internally we can have uh, an optimization of resources and scheduling, but then when you, we, when you outsource to an external cleaning company, uh, this, <laughs> this optimization gets lost because they don't have anything like that. No? So, so this, is, um, this is where we, where we um, need to work and, and we have been working actually in the last uh, months I mean, taking advantage of, of this. No? So I yeah. would say that, and, and if you compare it with Europe, where where the and, and it's not only a Holly Homes, I think it's a it's a global market condition. The outsourcing in the in the Middle East has much much less. It's it's much less mature than than in Europe, for example, and as a, as a, as a as a market as an industry, by, by for for several reasons, and uh, and that also impacts this this uh, adop adoption of technology. No? So yeah, basically you build your own proprietary tech and it's fantastic, but the partners that you want to work with are not enabled enough to be able to communicate efficiently with that tech that you've uh, designed. Yeah, and they, they destroy, well, not they destroy, but they, they, it yeah. impacts the efficiency, no? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, so you need to see, maybe you, you either integrate them more into your, your, I mean, you integrate them vertically in your operation, for example, or you... And, and that is, I mean, sometimes we talk about technology thinking a robot, no, or artificial intelligence, but it's that simple of having a smartphone or yeah. going with the typical Nokia, no? I mean, you yeah, know, yeah. in Dubai, a lot of people go with, uh, with, with operational people with the Nokia that has no, <laughs> not a single app, no? So it, it yeah. can come from that small detail. No? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, we'll go into, uh, we've got uh, a few questions that are uh, very interesting. I can't wait to get into them. Uh, and I, again, encourage anyone who's got any questions to send them through, through the Q&A button at the bottom. We'll start with you, Adam, a question that comes. Uh, it says, uh, you've touched on uh, super apps in general with uh, the cleaning and uh, all the different things. Um, can you elaborate more on how you see them uh, moving forward in the future? Is there any particular take that you have on those? Super apps. Super apps is, uh, in my opinion, I'll tell you from a tech uh, experience wise, I look at super apps as a very risky business. Uh, it's not for any country and it's not for the entire world. I mean, if you look at the trends of super apps, they tend to be in the East of Asia, and of China, Bangladesh, uh, India. These people with a highly populated uh, uh, country, that's what super apps are all about. So if you look at the, the masters of the leading super apps, you have the Gojek, you have the WeChat, you have the Alipay, you have the Grab, all of those are, you know, four, five, six hundred million users. And that's where that's why they're working. And if you look at where we are active, they're going to be active in that region. Yeah. It's not, it's not for the region it's because we don't have that population yet. Uh, unless, and coming in to such a super app, the growth of it or the expansion of it, which a lot of people oversee, 
is not that easy because nobody really wants to work if you're working in a single app, single purpose app. You're, you're going, for example, here you're going to Uber, or you're going to the or you're going, it's, it's fun to do, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. How these super apps work is that they go very, very old and come in quiet. So, yes, in the future, I see the road drive, I see the new chat, I see these super apps are already substantial with billions of dollars of investment coming to acquire the likes of the Uber, the likes of the Uber. So they can come into this region and propose and offer the super apps. But building super apps from the start, it's extremely expensive. It's extremely difficult if we're looking at this region. The US, even the US as a US, they don't have the, the, the super apps are not as popular as Yeah. So that's really the complication of it. South America, we're starting to see some super apps coming from there. But in general, that's what I'm Yeah, yeah. Um, Type. we'll move on to the next question. Uh, I think this touches on both Khaled and uh, Oriel, so we'll ask you Khaled first. Um, um, as it seems like hotels are, con it's, I'll read into the question a bit, but it seems like hotels are developing their own uh, applications and, and their own technologies. Do you think that they will continue to do so or outsource that tech development uh, outside, in your opinion? Uh, look, uh, it doesn't matter which way you do it as long as it serves the purpose. Uh, uh, I think in, in terms of hotels, uh, if they don't have one at the moment, I really urge them to start doing one and start you know, investing in, in this space for sure. Uh, but as we know, most of the of the big players they already have their own apps, uh, apps because it's uh, it's an extension of 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 the loyalty uh, and and the repeat customers and and having that open dialogue and continuous interaction uh, with their uh, uh, um, with their loyal customer on on a global base because their footprint is is massive and 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 obviously they have they have the the ability to. Uh, to scale it and, and to work on, on, on so many different uh, so many different levels. When we talk to uh, uh, independent operators more and, and, and like the hotel apartments or local hotel chains and, and so on, uh, I think it, it is it is time if you don't have already an app in place to start really accelerating and, and developing and developing one, it should, focus on, on loyalty, it should focus on the interaction, it, it should focus, as we said, the journey of the customer as soon as he steps foot or as soon as he makes a booking really uh, with, with, the, with this facility until the day or the time they leave the, the premises and gaining loyalty afterwards and keeping that, that, that dialogue open. Uh, so no, definitely 100%. Being, it, being outsourced, I think, uh, depends on the services that this outsourced uh, uh, party or partner might have that might potentially have added benefits to me as, as an operator, uh, uh, where it gives me uh, certain uh, visibility and it also gives me access to uh, uh, you know, the other uh, components of, of the stay, being it the, uh, the delivery business, being booking entertainment and leisure, uh, being the uh, essential services, if I don't have it as as a, what we call a select service operator, uh, you know, a laundry service or, or, or if I'm a hotel apartment, uh, I might have a kitchen or a kitchenette in place, so might be useful for ordering uh, uh, delivery, ordering uh, groceries and, and so on. So if I find an outsourced app that gives me this extended, uh, you know, services, Definitely, why not? I'll go for it. Uh, but again, I urge everybody, you need to start. Yeah, for sure. And uh, what about you, Oriel? You guys are, uh, you guys, like we said before, at High Guests, you guys are very tech enabled. You've developed your own proprietary tech. Is this something you'd encourage other similar operators to do if you were not in a competitive uh, uh, relationship? Or do you think uh, working on stuff that is, uh, 
from the outside off the shelf is is more uh, interesting for uh, for your space in the future uh, to be honest, to be honest i mean the 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 first cto we had in the company said the moment you start hiring a tech team is the first day of the end of the company no? ah. he said he was a cto but uh, I don't, because it's also fixed cost and everything no but to be honest is for me it's a strategic question that that um that it's very difficult to answer this, this specific question because it depends on what's available in the market, um, which specific uh, pain point you want to solve, um, the, also the, the, the skills of your team, not only the tech team, but also, also the product team, no? because you can have a, or a strategic team or delivery team. You can have someone very specialized in customer and then the customer oriented technology have, can have a lot of inputs, internal inputs, no? or, or, or yeah. and you need maybe the, the strategic view of an external company. or So it depends. No? For us, it's, it's, it's a combination. I know this answer is a typical one, but it's a combination of, of everything. We, we take external uh, outsource and then we integrate it with our system, and which is the strategy I think we're going to follow uh, moving forward, and uh, but conserving our core uh, in-house. Yeah. Well, we've come to the last question, and it's again for you, Oriel. Um, it's got to do uh, pretty much the same question we spoke about earlier regarding uh, uh, adoption of uh, technology. Will it be more of uh, a customer behavior or an, uh, a, a cost driver that allows these uh, technologies to be adopted? So do you think in, in the future, the more you go uh, tech, is it to enhance the guest experience or is it to make the, uh, the operation more lean and reduce your margins? What is the main driver for you looking forward? I mean, again, doing forecast now, it's like the riskiest business in the world, but uh, looking, I mean, looking in the future, in my opinion, no, we will see uh, less demand and more supply. No? So yeah. the fight in the market will be to get the demand. So the, the typical answer would be focus on, on, on customer technology, position yourself well to, to attract all this, all this demand. No? However, yeah. that's for me the answer that, that we, we will find in, in the books. No? However, from an from a operational or execution perspective, I think today with the uncertainty of what the, the customer will want in the future, I think at, at least what we have done is focus on, on costs, uh, reorganize the company internally. I think, so, I think Halet com made this comment, no? made, made the whole process lean in the operations because it's i think it's what you have to do today because yeah. you need to reduce costs you need to adapt to the, to the the operation and you don't know what the customer wants because what what you offer today to the customer maybe it's it's useless in three months no and yeah. but but again in the future we'll need to find for cost uh, fight for demand so the focus should be in the in the revenue in the top top line no in the revenue side yeah yeah well um we were just gonna wrap up but uh we just got two more questions uh for, so we'll just fire them off quickly. One is for you, Adam, as an angel investor. Uh, we saw some hot sectors during the peak of the pandemic where investors were trying to double up on their investments such as e-groceries, et cetera. However, their numbers, these investments numbers today are going down. As an angel uh, investor, do you see investing, how do you see investing in F&B and hospitality with uh, the future being so unpredictable? Is there any particular strategy you're taking a look at? Very good question, very good question. So let me uh, just take it a step back. I mean, I'll talk about investments in general. Um, for us in f and you know, I, I also double down on my f and restaurants. But just because the PR says that we're investing in it doesn't mean we're investing in it because we believe that uh, this is going to you know, quadruple or we're going to get a 7x on our, our investment. But some, a lot of the f and had to invest in that f and and hospitality industry to survive. I mean, our OPEX is extremely high and due to the regulations that have been included for the COVID, working capacity 25%, months shut down and stuff like that. We either shut down and lose your entire investment or you have to double down your investment to survive, hoping that, you know, the future is going to be stable again. Looking at the historical events and looking at how history works and the world lives, uh, we've seen bubbles, we've seen some great, insane uh, events in our uh, economical lifestyle, lifetime, but they always tend to kind of manage and stabilize at some point. So that's from an investment perspective. 
investors uh, investing in e uh, e grocery uh, the uh, insta shop uh, insta shop and all those uh, platforms yes they've seen a spike and yes now that people are not starting to leave the house and move out and stuff like that we're still seeing uh, the numbers go down and that's very true but what we need to look at and i think it's very important is we were maybe here with covid we went all the way up and now when the numbers came down and we're still here so it's still a profitable business and that's expected and uh, it's going to be seasonal we're looking at summer in dubai a lot of people are leaving but if you're looking globally all these online companies whether it's aggregators whether it's uh, online grocery shopping whether it's uh, services they've seen no joke three to four hundred percent growth month to month not year to year month to month so yes I think investing in early, don't go to Series F, Series D, but like if you're like a Series A, C, P, C, in such uh, uh, F and B hospitality technology in the right markets, I believe it's a good investment. Great. And now for the last question, and it seems to be a more, uh, it's for Oriel, but uh, it seems to be a more uh, live question. It says, uh, it's from Nilima. She says, due to the pandemic, there appears to be lots of new online businesses, entrepreneurs specializing in different products and services who are actually earning successfully and sometimes much better than their corporate job. Do you think this is a wiser alternative than working on a corporate nine to five job? Okay, so let me know who are they because, <laughs> because I mean, I'm, I'm telling influencers. And I mean. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Especially not now. I don't yeah. think, I mean, Adam, Adam said it, it's the investment in FMB hospitality that is to survive. And, and, yeah. and that's what we're doing now. So 2020 is survival mode. And yeah. uh, hopefully we'll succeed in, I mean, we'll continue succeeding in 2021. But I think, I mean, to answer this question more, I mean, seriously, um, money wise, uh, and especially the, the founding team, if you want to make money, continue in corporate. Uh, but I would not change now and go back to corporate where I had like a four times salary that I have today yeah. because it's much more fun. It's, it's, uh, and it's, but, but it's hyper, hyper, hyper stressful. So especially in these times, but, and I'm sure you can, you can say that and the others as well. So yeah. if you want to have fun, uh, learn, mature professionally, meet interesting people, um, yes, create a company. If you want to make more money than corporate life, continue in the corporate life <laughs> all right so uh, we'll wrap this up now uh, thank you everyone thank you panelists for your valuable time and uh, really a lot of uh, fantastic insights and like i said we'll uh, we'll uh, put it up on youtube and then share uh, bite-sized bits so that uh, everyone can get uh, access to this uh, these lovely uh, answers that we had in this lovely conversation and thank you very much to all the attendees and the questions. Um, really fantastic and really look forward to, um, you know, connecting with everyone back soon. So this is us from Pondok saying thank you very much for this webinar and see you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.